Hey, what's going on guys? Zach here from Imperium Racing and today we're going to be doing a tool review. Tester here. This little box that came in. Nice little box. Came with the manual and the tool. And the leads are all attached. There's no connections you have to worry about. You probably don't want to damage these because they'll be harder to fix. But there's no extra connections, which is good for testing electronics. So we got a couple of big leads. They open up fine. Plenty long enough. And we got the tester here. As you can see by the manual, it does battery tests, as well as a few other things. So it looks like we got a battery test, a starting test, charging test, all kinds of stuff you can print from it. So doing a quick little battery test, we'll just have to click the battery type mode and it'll give us selection, put in your cold cranking amps, and then it will tell you all that stuff. Life, state of charge, resistance, what it actually measured the cold cranking amps at. So. Pretty cool. Looks like starting, it'll do a little voltage. Voltage check while starting, tell you how much it drops. All kinds of stuff. So we're gonna give this bad boy a shot. All right, so I have a bunch of batteries to test, which is why this is the perfect tool to do a video on right now. I just bought this battery yesterday from Subaru, brand new. So that one should obviously test really well. Uh, this is a very nice battery that was in my Integra for a little bit, but I barely used it, but it's really old. So it's a quality battery, but it's probably maybe five, five or six years old now um, and been sitting in the garage most of its life. But I have charged it about once a year. So once a year, once every six months. This battery came out of the Integra that I sent to pick and pull. This battery, I believe needed to be jump started a few times, but then as long as the car was started every, maybe once a week, then the battery is okay. So this battery, pretty iffy. This one is really good, but old. This one's brand new. And then my silver Subaru outside that that battery's for has been barely starting. It's been getting worse. And each time I start it, it's like, doesn't do it almost. So we're gonna test the silver Subaru starting and then we're going to test the battery hooked up, not hooked up. I'm going to test all three of these. And my blue Subaru last winter had a little bit of an extended crank. Um, it took a little longer to turn over. And once the weather warmed up, it was fine. And the weather's starting to get cold again. So I'm going to test that battery too. So we got five batteries to test today to really put this tool to the test, which is good. So we got this bad boy hooked up to the brand new Subaru battery. Battery. Do a quick test. Turn off the engine. If you have the battery hooked up in the car, make sure you follow these instructions and, and do all these steps. Since the battery is not in a car, we'll hit okay. Cold cranking amps. So it's upside down, but 550 is a cold cranking amp of this. Hit okay. And that was a real quick test. 12 and a half volts measured basically the right cold cranking. And it says 89% life, 82% charge. Which makes sense because this battery's probably sat on the shelf for a few weeks or a month or so. And you know, probably has a little surface charge on it. And once I put this in the car, it gets drawn down and charged by the alternator a few times. It will probably be just fine. Cool. Still says great though. Which I would hope it would for a battery I bought yesterday. I would say you really have to take into account all of the information you're getting here and not just go off of one thing. Like if you only go off of the life, you'll say, what, what the heck? 90%, that's messed up. But it says great because taking into account all that stuff, it's fine. And after I put this in the car and it gets charged by the alternator, it will probably be at, you know, 95%, 100% charge. And, and that life number probably go up a bit. So let's keep going. On to battery two. Cold cranking amps on this is 450, so we gotta go back down. We 
we say before charging. Uh, it's almost at 12 volts, which is impressive. Uh, cold cranking, almost 400. 75% life, state of charge, 44%. That's impressive. So, like I said, this has been charged about every, honestly, every six months since it hasn't been in a car for five years. So, I'm pretty impressed. And I'm probably going to test the battery in my Integra now. And if it's not as good as this one, then shoot, I'll just keep this battery for now. On to the next. All right, so we went for the third battery that I knew would be the worst, and it won't even turn the tester on. You can see I got the test lead hooked up here, and the battery tester won't even turn on, which means it either isn't getting enough voltage to work, or most likely they have a regulator in here, and if it sees below a certain amount of voltage, it's not even gonna try and work because it's pointless. So I hooked my voltmeter up, and we are at 3.961 volts which, yeah, that's pretty low. Um, I am a little surprised the tester isn't at least saying something at, at four volts, just turn on and say low voltage or something, but I guess they don't want to give any false hope. So it's at four volts, it won't turn on. I grabbed the manual to check and it says suitable for 12 volt automotive, uh, starting batteries, working voltage, nine to 18 volts. So that makes sense. We are way below nine volts. DC, so it will not work, which makes sense. So uh, that battery's great. That one's old, but still kind of good. And this one's freaking terrible. Now I'm gonna try the start test and charging test. And we'll see how those tests run on this tool. Now I'm going to go test the Silver Super battery. And then we're gonna try and do a start test on it because this tool says it can do that. And then if it does start, we'll do a charging test because this tool says it can do it. Which personally, I always just look at battery voltage with the car running and you can tell if the alternator is working or not. But this says it'll do a test, so why not? Let's give it a shot, test the tool out. Here we come, Silver Subaru. So of course this bad boy wouldn't start, so I had to use a jumper box. Shout out Mac Tools. I'll do a tool review on that another day. Just kidding, there's no need. It's the best jumper box there is. If you work at a shop, get that one. Um, this is our battery test, and this is pretty cool, and this is the reason a battery tester is useful, is if you just put your voltmeter on this battery, You'd be at like, all right, 11.2, not too bad. It'll drive it around, charge it up, it'll be all right. Um, you might think that. Whereas in reality, the cold cranking amps are only 65. That's a huge resistance in there. Um, and it literally says 0% life, 8% state of charge. So I started the car and it ran for, I don't know, three, four minutes maybe. Drove it up in the garage. And that's probably the only reason it has any voltage in it at all. Again, this is the useful part of a battery tester, is it'll give you all of the information, a legit test, and actually tell you it needs to be replaced, which I already knew because the car was cranking slow and then not cranking. Pretty cool, confirms what I was thinking. And again, that voltage reading can be a little tricky, can throw you off sometimes. If I drove this around, you know, for 10 minutes or something and come back, that'd probably be at 12 volts. And you might think, oh, Battery's all right. In reality, it's not. crazy. Uh, the Optima battery is sitting on its own little battery tray, which I've never seen. And then underneath is just this thin black one that doesn't really do anything except for catch some juice. And under that, there's some battery acid eating away and, and, excuse me, excuse me. So 
this is the fender liner back here. So without the fender liner, that shit's just eaten through the body. This is the fender of the car. That's crazy. That's not good. That's uh, very bad. Yeah. Okay. Gonna clean these off. Put them back on. fancy Subaru battery in there. Um, I'm selling the car, so Subaru battery, Subaru oil filter. Make it look real nice and real legit. Um, that battery's out. This is the bad battery. I'm gonna do one more test on it just to make sure the battery tester is consistent. And then I'm going to test Subaru and the Integra batteries. And we'll see, we'll see what they say. Cause this car's fine. Um, I've let it sit for a month, month and a half, and it it starts up fine. Um, but the battery is cheap brand and probably old. Subaru battery is 2017, came with the car, and slow cranks in the cold months. I'm curious to see what uh, they both say. Alright, so my first go around with this battery tester running the start test and the alternator test, I did it incorrectly. Uh, I tried to just go through it and I was like, alright, I guess that's how you do it. Not a very good test. I just did it wrong. So this is how you do it correctly and I'm refilming this to insert it in the middle of this video so that you know how to do it. We're going to start with the start test and then once I have it running, we'll, we'll do the alternator test. Or as the tool refers to it, start test and charge test. So first you want to go to the start test. Start. So here it loads up to 20%, it says please start engine. Previously I thought, oh it only says 20%, so I hit OK again and it went up to 100% and then I started the engine. That's incorrect. What you want to do is you click start, I'll show you again. Click start, it loads up to 20%, please start the engine, start the engine and then hit OK. All right, this may be a little loud because the engine's running, but as you can see for the start test, all it does is monitor battery voltage and make sure it doesn't drop too much because if, you, if your battery's going bad, it'll drop significantly, right? So it's monitoring battery voltage. It was at 12 and a half volts. I started my car. The battery only went down to 12 volts, which is great. So you start it and then you go look at your graph and it shows you your little voltage drop. That's perfect. That's all it is. If it drops significantly, then Maybe you have a bad cell in your battery or the battery's just old, it, it's starting to go out, right? So now we're on the charging test. It says turn your headlights on and then off and then rev it up to 2500 RPM. So headlights are on, I'm gonna turn them off. Just turn them off and 
it was kind of cold, so it revved itself up to like 2,000 RPM for a minute anyways. But I'll rev it up. So my headlights are already on, I just turned them off. Now we'll rev it up. I believe it said three seconds, so that's fine. Now we go back to the tool. And hit OK, start the test. So that test is very similar to the start test where it simply monitors battery voltage and makes sure that the alternator responds. So with the engine running, um, and anytime you put a load on the battery or electrical system, for instance, turning on the headlights, turning on the stereo, doing anything, it should drain the battery a little bit and the alternator should see that and respond and charge it a little more. Everything goes through your battery, right? Everything runs off the battery and then the alternator simply charges the battery. You turn on the headlights, you rev it up and then it tests it and it's just kind of monitoring voltage. So it's monitoring did the battery drop significantly when you did all these things? Did the alternator respond correctly? Because it should be pretty instant that a load gets put on the battery and the alternator realizes and starts charging more. Pretty good test, honestly. Yeah, you could kind of do similar things with a voltmeter, but it's really easy to use a tool, super simple, it does everything for you, and then just gives you a graph at the end and lets you know. So charging test, starting test, regular battery test, I'm impressed. Enough rhyming, back to the video, this thing's great. vlogged you up here. Alright guys, this will be the first uh, vlog. Vlogging. Alright, we're vloggers. Alright, we, we, me, I am vlogging. We are, we are vlogging. Um, 